Hello. Hello, Andre. <laughs> hey. Um. Of course, I started with an um. <laughs> That's horrible. Episode nine. That's crazy. Episode nine. Can you believe it? Episode nine. That's almost that's almost ten episodes. We're getting close to the big one out. We'll find a way to make it extra creepy. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> Maybe a three hour episode on Bigfoot. Oh, can we not? Like I, I don't wanna <laughs> do three hours. <laughs> and I already told you I know where Bigfoot is. He's in Washington. <laughs> Go find him. He's playing Black Desert online 24 hours a day. <laughs> How are you, Shannon? I'm all right. I I could be better. I I don't know what that means. I'm back to my bad sleeping schedule. So, Shannon, you went ghost hunting this weekend. Oh, I did. And I recorded it and nothing happened. Okay, some stuff happened, but not the stuff that you would expect and what stuff happened some geese tried to attack my friend riley they just fully just cornered him um we weren't (laughs) sure if this was the work of spirits possessing the geese it probably wasn't he picked up a giant stick to protect himself luckily it did not come to blows and i recorded it all as with the um with the assumption that i would post it as a bonus episode however i am having severe problems with that i don't know why i think she may have gotten some good um oh my god what's that called the ghost recordings evps i mean there's some good jump scares (laughs) i'm not gonna lie like we freaked ourselves out (laughs) yeah i bet you what i mean you went to this abandoned house right no we actually went to a creek but that's it's all i want to keep it a mystery just in case it does get posted but it was, okay, it was, okay. it was yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. Okay. Um, so, today we are talking about unsolved mysteries. That's a very broad category. It is. Shannon, would you like me to start? I would love for you to start. Okay. Okay. So, I have something in for you today. Um, as I have every time. <laughs> I... <laughs> I never miss one. Um, Quite confident. They're they're always good. Jersey Devil is quaking, though, because this one's really good. Okay. So, um, uh, I'm talking, today I'm talking about the death of Eliza Lamb. So, for those of you who don't know, Eliza Lamb was, oh, by the way, I'm fine, Shannon. Thank you for asking. Oh, Um, oh, oh, yeah. How are you, Andre? I worry. I worry about you so much. (laughs) no i don't care and no one cares like my life is fine it's typical i go to work everything's okay so i think everyone's an andre fan yeah (laughs) (laughs) i think everyone just keeps up with me so really no one needs to be told how i am because everyone just already knows yeah exactly Um, (laughs) you can hear it in my voice so elisa lamb this is uh actually kind of disturbing kind of disturbing of a case but i find it super interesting which is why i decided to go with this one i also remember like when this came out in 2013 um I was, I don't know, I just got, like, the, the heebie-jeebies. And since then, I've i have really loved the case. Now, I understand that you are kind of a skeptic about this, yeah. this whole thing. Okay. I mean, <laughs> well, that's I think the biggest thing for me is that it's so recent, and I just feel bad for her. Like, I think that's... And so when I, I, I hear people say, like, oh, it's, it's this or that, I'm like, oh, this poor girl is just dead, and, like... We just, mm-hmm. we don't talk about her, you know? She Maybe she didn't want this. I don't know. That, that's fair. I will touch on that later, on, like, people's coverage of it and kind of, like, the cultural absorption of it, even though it was so, like, soon after her death. I'll touch on that later. I understand your position. Okay, let me get into this. So, Elisa Lam was a uh, Canadian student. She studied at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver in Canada. And uh, she was, like, long story short, she was recovered from a water tank uh, on top of the Cecil Hotel in L.A. Now it's called, like, the Stay at Main Street or something like that. They rebranded after this, obviously. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So she, she was found on top of the hotel in a water tank. She had been reported missing at the beginning of the month. And uh, it was maintenance workers at the hotel that found the body because they were investigating guest complaints that the water was like streaky and black and dirty and smelly and that is just fucking horrifying Ugh. so that's that's like the tldr now um the, the guests drank that water too yes yes they did they they drank it that was i mean yeah that was that was yeah there was a human being in that water sorry i just have to reiterate that <laughs> no i it's uh, yeah i mean they did the circumstances 
I guess you could say, of her death raised questions, which is how this case got so big. Um, like, well, actually, I'll get into it later. I don't want to get, like, all in a ball and confused. So, basically, um, the Cecil Hotel is known for other notable murders and, like, killings and accidents, stuff of that nature. And, like, this didn't help their image. And also, like, the fact that the hotel is known for that didn't help, like, deter people from thinking that Eliza Lamb's death was other than an accident, which is what it was eventually ruled out as. So, mm -hmm. let's get into the nitty gritty. So, this girl, she, again, she was, a, she was a college student and she traveled to uh, the U.S. on a train and on buses. She uh, visited, like, San Diego and then she started going back north to L.A., on the 26th of January of 2013, she checked into the Cecil Hotel in LA. She was initially uh, given a room with, it was like a shared room in the fifth floor of the hotel with like roommates. I guess that's cheaper. Um, mm -hmm. But the roommates complained that she was weird. They, I mean, the quote is that she had certain odd behavior. Uh, and so she was moved out of her room, out of that room after two days and like given a new room of her own. And of course, that quote unquote certain odd behavior phrase would be brought up later when like litigation around the case started happening. Um, yeah. So like people basically believing like, oh, she was crazy and that's why she died. <laughs> Let me just continue. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just it's, it's a lot. So. Um, a little background of the hotel, actually, which I find interesting. The hotel um, fell in hard times during the Great Depression, and it never really, like, got back on its feet completely. Like, it really never re-entered the market the way that it was. And uh, several of LA's, like, I guess you could call most notable murders are related to the hotel. Like, um... Like the Black Dahlia murder, um, the the victim of that murder, her name was Elizabeth Short. I'm sure you know about this. Mm. She uh, she had a connection to the hotel. Like apparently, she was staying there before she died back in the '60s. There was also this um, famous lady, this famous alien oh. lady called Goldie Oswood. She was known as the Pigeon Lady of Parishing Square, and she was raped and murdered at the Cecil. Um, what have you heard about that or something? Are you related to the pigeon lady? No, it just reminds me of Home Alone too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> like Jack Unterweger and Richard Ramirez, which were both serial killers. Um, Richard Ramirez is a night stalker. For those of you who don't know, they both were at the Cecil while they were active. Um, so not a great history this place has. There's also been like a bunch of suicides. Are you gonna mention that? Uh... Season five of American Horror Story is based on this hotel. Yeah, so that's that's <laughs> yes, it is. Fun um, trivia. No, I was not going to mention that, <laughs> but it is fun trivia. Yeah, popular culture really absorbed this, and uh, Ryan Murphy did season five Hotel with Queen Gaga, um, like inspired by the Cecil Hotel's history. Like, like there's basically like a bunch of like killer ghosts in the hotel, and there are all people who like resided there for a while. Interesting stuff. Um, they never actually like reference the death of Eliza Lamb, but Ryan Murphy, like before season five was released, did give an interview and he did say like, oh yeah, I decided to go with like a creepy hotel in LA because I read this story about a girl who died in a water tank and I was inspired. Oh, so, and he never like said her name, but like obviously that's what inspired him. Right. And it was this case, obviously. Um, so yeah, yeah, it is connected. Uh, anyway, Cecil, horrible story. Um, after recent renovations, it has again tried to like market itself, market itself differently. It is called, like I said, the um, uh, what was it? The the main. Oh, stay at main. The stay at main, yeah. Which, whatever kind of name, okay. Um, but it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. It's never recaptured the market that it used to have. So bummer. Anyway, um, so lamb. This girl, she goes to the hotel, she checks in, and uh, it is important to note that she had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression. She had been prescribed four medications at the time that she, 
by the time that she checked into this hotel, they were um, Wilbutrin, Lamictal, Seroquel, and Ephexor to treat her disorders. So a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. And this obviously is relevant because it's later brought up that like one of the ways this all could have happened is she went crazy or she took too many drugs or something of that and basically ended up dead somehow. Now, obviously, this is going to be like a relevant factor when authorities are trying to determine how someone died. The fact that they had a bunch of prescribed medications. And honestly, that's fair. So um, she had no history of like suicide attempts, though, or suicidal like thoughts, according to her family. So that's also important to note, because that makes this piece of the puzzle like not fit very well. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, just to argue that a little bit, I would say that if you had previous suicide attempts that failed, it's a little bit. I don't know, like, here's the one that actually worked, you know what I mean? Like, they're waiting for the right one. <laughs> Not to get too dark, but... <laughs> but again, I mean, there's she has no history of trying it. Right, but she has history of depression. Oh, so you're saying, like, she got it on the first try? Yeah, exactly. I guess, but we'll get into that. Like, basically, like, how that's kind of unlikely, given that where she died and how she died. Okay. Like, point blank, basically, like, how the fuck did she get in that tank? That's really the big question. Let me continue. So um, she had plans to attend graduate graduate school. Sorry, graduate school. And that's important to note because I don't think if you're suicidal, you have plans for the future. Uh, so, school is the that. only thing that makes me want to kill myself. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so she, well, she was in LA. She contacted her parents back in Canada every day. Uh, and on the 31st of January of 2013... She was scheduled to check out of the hotel of the Cecil and leave for Santa Cruz. Her parents, though, did not hear from her that day. And so they called the L.A. police and her family then flew to L.A. to help with the search. So now she was officially missing. Um, Hotel staff who saw her that day, the 31st, said that she was alone. Outside of the hotel, there was only one person who saw her. Her name was uh, Katie Orphan, and she was the manager of a bookstore that was nearby. And she recalled seeing Lam that day, and she said, quote, she was outgoing, very lively, and very friendly. And she was there to buy gifts for her family. She was uh, talking about what book she was getting for her family. So, again, she seemed to, like, interact with this manager. She seemed lively. That doesn't sound like someone who's about to kill themselves, but I retract. Um, uh, so, police searched the hotel to the extent that they could that day. They couldn't find anything. They searched uh, Eliza's room. They searched her room and they had dogs go through the building, including the rooftop, but the dogs did not find her scent. Um, Then on February 6th, so almost a week later, after she had last been seen, the LAPD decided that more help was needed. And so they put out flyers. Now, this doesn't help either. So, sorry, about a week and a half later, they're like, we need more help. And they release a video of the last known sighting of her, which was taken in one of the hotel's elevators. And I am sure you have seen this. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So, um, again, the reason it's such a big case is because the LAPD decided to release a lot of the quote unquote evidence or uh, clues, I guess you could call them. And they wouldn't have if they had. I don't know, like if, if they thought they had the resources to solve this on their own, but they didn't, which only lends credence to the idea that this like case was so puzzling, which it is. It is fucking puzzling. So they released a video to the public to be like, anyone who can help us, please. So they released this video. At some point, Eliza's mouth is pixelized. That's important to note for a reason that I will mention later. Uh, now, she in the video, she enters f- from the left into the elevator and goes to the control panel. And then she appears to select several floors. And then she steps back to the corner of the elevator. Then after a few seconds, I mean, this is, again, for people who haven't seen the video, it's it's hard to describe, but just follow. So after a few seconds, during which the doors don't close, she steps up to it, to the doors, leans forward. So her head is through the doors. She looks like both ways outside. And then she quickly steps back in, like, back all the way to the wall. And then into, like, a corner near the control panel. And and the door is still open. So, 
and then <laughs> that's basically like a glimpse of the video in audio format and then she keeps doing like weird shit and for like another one two minutes the door stays open and this was according to the to the footage of the elevator otherwise a working elevator at all times so why the hell did it stop working all of a sudden isn't that bizarre um some people have wait so it stopped working and i don't understand if she was like running away or like from something <laughs> why'd she stay in there i don't get it well that's the thing like i guess i'll just go into my theory now first i thought murderer but then i thought uh -huh. alien <laughs> aliens <laughs> <laughs> wait did you say your first theory and go immediately to aliens <laughs> <laughs> I said that first I thought murderers, but then I thought aliens because you just always think aliens. Okay, I didn't hear you say, I didn't hear you say, but then I thought, I thought you just said aliens. <laughs> <laughs> or I wonder if it recorded that or I'm no, crazy. I think it did, but um, or demons or ghosts or something uh invisible, but basically not like something earthly. And the reason I thought that is because to me, honestly. I'll just deviate from what I was talking about for a second to just go into my personal opinion. When I saw that video, what the first thing that I thought was, again, because she wasn't running, like you said, she wasn't running away. She was just like in the elevator checking something out. The first thing I thought was she is being chased by like a ghost. And hmm. she saw that, but like then it disappeared and... Or, or, or maybe like the ghost is right there, but she's trying to make sure that she's not hallucinating by like putting her arm and waving it outside of the elevator doors. Maybe she's like touching the ghost and like her hand is going through and she's just weirded out. But obviously you can't see that mm. on camera. Just something to that extent. Like she saw something, something that can't be seen on camera. She was maybe trying to prove to herself that she wasn't crazy. And so she was doing all that crazy shit. And to me, what backs that up, it's just that like, weird strange fact that for those like four or five minutes the elevator stopped working and the elevator had like no reported issues in like any days after that or like several days before that you know what i mean like nothing and then all of a sudden it stops working and then it works perfectly fine again so well she did press uh, a bunch of buttons beforehand so maybe the sequence made it jam up or something I mean, that is true. People are like, oh, maybe she could have, like, jammed the control panel. But I don't know. Honestly, to, I, I mean, yes, obviously. But to me, that just sounds like... <laughs> to me, Like, the person who says that to me just sounds like the person in the movie who's, like, the non-believer. But then, like, the ghost catches <laughs> them because they didn't believe. And, like, now they're going to learn their lesson. Like, that's honestly what it sounds like hey, to me. Hey, out of the two of us, who <laughs> went ghost hunting this week and survived? <laughs> <laughs> just like... I'm just saying... I don't know, just, like, what What are the chances? You know what I mean? Like, do you think that no other, like, guest of the Cecil ever does that? Like, a kid or fucking like, pressing all the buttons all the time? I like how that's um, what you're skeptical about, is the, the technical stuff. You're not skeptical about ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I don't believe anyway. in this hacking machinery nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, continue. Um, th that's basically the video. Um, like, she, she tries a bunch of stuff, and she basically, like, almost dances around this elevator because she's moving back and forward so much and to the side and waving her arms and like looking out and then going back in and then looking out and going back in and the doors stay open until they finally close like she backs to the wall at one point for one last time and walks away um from the elevator and then the elevator closes note the elevator does not close when mm. she's inside it okay so um what but anyway um Again, there's several theories for this. One is that she was trying to get the elevator to move in order to escape from someone who was chasing her. Which, yeah, okay. Another one is that um, she was like under the influence mm. of ecstasy or something, and so she was acting crazy. Um, then, like when the bipolar disorder, the fact that she had it, like became known. The theory, like the main theory, was that she was having like a psychotic episode and that's why she acted that way which yes possible but to me it's just not likely due to her behavior earlier that day they wanted the manager to describe but she said that she was lively yeah like well i mean the lively thing that's just mania that's a symptom of bipolar it's when you're really really happy i mean if she was maniac that day oh again she could have just been normal and not been in a state of either 
like mania or depression that day. Maybe she was having a good day. But obviously, it's hard to prove that when she has a history of bipolar disorder. So, like, I understand that. But obviously, I want to be the believer here. So, I am not factoring that. Yeah. In. Do you think that the waving her arms and looking out was because she knew the elevator was broken and she wanted help? No, she wasn't looking at the camera. She wasn't yelling for help. She was just doing this thing almost like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, to me, it just looked like, I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, again, like she was trying to like prove to herself that she wasn't crazy. She was like, am I seeing things? Like, that's what I'm reading from that. And mm-hmm. also, like, the fact that her mouth was pixelated. I want to know what she was saying. Why was her mouth pixelated? Also, there's footage missing from that video around one to two minutes. And some people think that maybe it was because someone else came into frame and they were trying to edit that out because it would be someone who doesn't want to be involved with the case. Maybe just like a passerby. Okay, that's fair. Or there was nefarious intent and maybe she was being chased. Her chaser did come into frame and they cut that out because the hotel is trying to cover something up. Fucking bam. So also like the timestamp on the video is blurred. Somehow people were still because people are amazing. They were still able to figure out that even though they couldn't see the actual timestamp, that footage was edited out. Um, Hmm. So again, very weird. Um, So that's the video. Now, the body. So they search for this girl. Again, the guests start complaining that the water tastes weird, that there's low water pressure. Some later claim that the water was colored black, which, holy fuck, ew. <laughs> and that it had an unusual taste. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, on, the mor- <laughs> on the morning of February 19th. So she had been missing for 19 days at this point. Lamb's body was found in one of four 1,000-gallon tanks providing water not just to the guest rooms, but to a kitchen and to a coffee shop within the hotel. So they were also eating food that was prepared with this water. Oh. I mean, like, the lawsuits. <laughs> the lawsuits. Oh. Um, the tank was drained and cut open since its, like, hatch was too small to accommodate equipment that was needed to remove the body. Now, isn't that interesting, right? Like, the thing is too small for equipment to go in to recover the body, but the body itself was, like, fine to go in. And also, okay, and even if you're like, oh, well, maybe she was just really skinny, Mm -hmm. like, skinnier than the equipment. Maybe, but also, I'm going to note this. um, I want the exact number. The tank was four by eight foot, and it was propped up on concrete blocks. So there's that mm. like it's tall basically like how did she get in there it had no ladder it had no you know what i mean so now back to what i was saying they cut this thing open they removed the body on the 21st of february the la coroner's office issued a finding of accidental drowning with bipolar disorder as like a big factor of this which to me is just cheap but anyway the full coroner's report was released in June, so months later, and it said that Lamb's body had been found naked, which it was. Um, clothing similar to what she was wearing in the elevator video was floating in the water, which I don't know why they would just say that's her clothing. Instead, they said water, uh, sorry, clothing similar to hers. Um, and that the clothing was coated with a quote unquote sand like particulate, which, <laughs> interesting. Um, her body was moderately decomposed, according to the coroner's report, and it was bloated. Now, there was no, yeah, I know there was no evidence of physical trauma or sexual assault, according to the report, or suicide. Toxicology tests, which by the way were incomplete because there wasn't enough blood in her, like preserved, <laughs> um, showed traces, according to this article, consistent with prescription medication found among her belongings, but not in her body. Plus, hmm. non-prescription drugs such as Advil, again, with her belongings. A very small quantity of alcohol, around 0.02 grams, was present, but no other recreational drugs were. And again, that's like, I don't know, a drink? So, this that wasn't it. Okay, <laughs> now here's the thing. The investigation determines how this girl died but it doesn't really 
explain how she got into the tank in the first place, which is like the big question here. Um, again, the doors and the stairs that access the hotel's roof were locked and only staff had keys. And if she tried to force them, like they should have triggered an alarm. At least, I mean, at least that's the mm-hmm. supposition, right? Maybe the alarm wasn't working. The hotel is shitty at maintenance, but it's supposed to trigger an alarm. And what what are the, what are the chances that like this one day or this one month that she happened to stay there, like the hotel hadn't kept up on its maintenance? Actually, never mind. It is likely. I mean, it took him twenty days to find a body. So <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. I didn't, really, I didn't really seem to care too much about the guest complaints. So maybe they are just shitty at maintenance, and maybe she was able to get in there, force the door, and the alarm didn't go off, and that's how no one, you know, like found her be- like earlier. But again. I just think it's kind of put some lemon in the water. It's fine. Just drink it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Now, apart from the question of how she got on the roof, uh, there's also the question of how she got into the tank by herself, more specifically. Uh, Again, four by eight foot tanks, uh, cylinders, and they're propped up on concrete blocks. And there is no, like, fixed access to these tanks. And the hotel workers, again, they had to use a ladder to get in there. So how did she get in there? I don't know. They the tanks are they have like heavy lids on them and that would be it would be like difficult to move those slits. So um, police dogs didn't find any trace of her when they were first looking, like when they first took the dogs to the hotel to look for her. Um, I thought that was interesting, and and I I like wrote a note on on my article which was like did this did this like sand like particulate like coat her body so that they can find her like maybe if it was a killer the killer like use whatever this thing was mm. some weird shit like i don't know silica gel i don't know something to like cover the scent so the dogs couldn't find her like i mean it's kind of a stretch how would the killer know there was a canine i mean it was in like a heavy if he's in a heavy tank and it's airtight how would they smell through also that, i mean know? yeah that's probably more likely but let me live my dreams um so <laughs> <laughs> i mean don't leave house without my gel. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Lama's behavior in the elevator um, didn't stop when she died, obviously. Some people argue that she was, um, again, attempting to like hide from someone. And maybe that person was responsible for her death. Um, while others said what we mentioned earlier, that maybe she was just like, like the control panel didn't work. Maybe she didn't do it, but like, it already wasn't working, and she was just frustrated that so she was flailing her arms around, which is kind of stupid to me. But like, we'll go with that. Sure, that's just one of the theories. Um, however, like we can keep those, but the she was like drugged up one. I, we can't keep that one because again, the toxicology reports didn't find anything of that nature. Um, so it's either she was well, actually, if, if she was frustrated. Or if she was frustrated, that would explain the video, but it wouldn't explain why she died. <laughs> I don't think she killed herself out of yeah. frustration because the elevator didn't work. Um, but, you know, if she was being chased or if she was just crazy, sure, that would explain death and the video, both. But anyway, that's that. Um, now, now, like I mentioned, the coroner's report didn't find, like, blunt force trauma or anything like that. But... It also didn't say what the results of the rape kit and the fingernail Mm -hmm. kit were, or even if they were processed, which to me is kind of weird because most coroners report half that, especially in such strange circumstances as this one. Um, But it did record that this quote unquote subcutaneous pulling of blood in Lamb's anal area uh, was found. And this is something that people have suggested as a sign of sexual abuse, obviously. And, like, a pathologist did mm-hmm. come out and say, like, oh, it could have just been because, like, her body bloated while it was decomposing. And so, like, maybe some weird pool formed, <laughs> like, around her butt. Uh, but her rectum was also prolapsed, according to the report. And I guess you can bloat that much, but I don't hear that a lot. I don't hear that a lot about bodies. So they just, like, when you die, like, I mean, she was in water again. So maybe it's different like the decomposition but that's just strange i don't know it's just strange um so maybe something did happen there um, i don't know anything about decomposition but prolapse is it fell out like a saw i feel like i don't know that sounds really really aggressive <laughs> like i feel like it has to be decomposition <laughs> that just doesn't sound 
personally, yeah, I go with that too. But I'm just trying to cast out on everything. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's fair. Also, thank thank you for the image, Shannon. Um, Falls out like a sock. If that's what prolapse is. <laughs> But it is important to note, though, that even the coroner's um, pathologists, like, they seem to be very unsure about their conclusions about whether the death was an accident. And I say this because uh, the accident, like, quote-unquote accident box on the coroner's report um, was marked as... Well, well, was marked, but then before the coroner's... I don't know how they found this out. This is so interesting. But before the coroner's report was actually, like, published and, like, like out in the public, it, it was... Um, it was like found out that the undetermined quote unquote undetermined box was checked instead like last minute so they were gonna hmm. yeah so like you know like the new story is oh it was like ruled out as an accident but technically that is not true the coroner's report was marked as accident but before it was published it was remarked as undetermined so um yeah interesting fact now, since her death, she had this girl had a blog. Um, I forgot to note that she had a she had a, a blog spot blog where she talked about her like her travels, and but then she like moved onto Tumblr. She moved her blog there, uh, so she dies and her Tumblr blog is uh, updated, presumably through Tumblr's Q option, which allows people to like put up posts like automatically. They're like timed, um, but. We don't know that for sure. So I bring this up basically to say, like, she had a blog and her blog kept being updated after she died. But, like, are we sure that it was Tumblr? Are we sure that it wasn't, like, the killer? I don't know. Um, <laughs> her phone, her phone. No, her phone wasn't found with her, by the way, in the, bo- like, with the body or in her t- hotel room. So it's assumed that it was, like, stolen. Sure, it could have been, like, just some weirdo that stole. No, actually, no, it couldn't have been because if, like, some, like, crackhead, like, stole her phone and her phone was with her it would have been with her like close to the water tank and i think even a crackhead has morals and would have been like oh shit i'm calling 911 you know what i mean like maybe but they also I don't could know. sell that for some good money but also like tumblr's on your computer too maybe she didn't have the app i guess it took me a um, while to get it also no 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 huh? they are sure she had a phone they are sure she had a phone because she contacted her parents she no i know but she phone. maybe she didn't have the tumblr app is what i'm saying oh okay so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, who has a Tumblr app? After all the well, no one, out? because they deleted it because of all the uh, issues. I mean, I have it's it because I didn't uninstall it. But, it's, oh, it's back, back on the Apple Store. Yeah, uh, it's back oh, because okay. Tumblr agreed to like delete all porn. Like, did you hear about the scandal? Like, it was basically oh, like... of course. Yeah, someone found like child porn. At, huge tangent. Someone found child <laughs> porn on like a Tumblr blog, which I honestly doubt that is the first time it was like put right. up there. I think it's just the first time anyone reported it. And exactly. Apple freaked out and was like, we're dropping your app from our App Store until you delete all the porn or it's never coming back and so he deleted all the porn i just a child porn uh which i thought was like so i don't know like tumblr kind of just like took well, it you know what i mean they also just delete stuff like they flagged a lot of my posts that weren't even inappropriate because their sensors are so off <laughs> like they just don't know like <laughs> yeah that that's also like the 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 the, uh, the danger i guess the the thing with um like AI doing the work of censoring like any NSFW content, which is that like this thing isn't perfect and it's learning all the time. So of course it's gonna flag weird stuff and then people are gonna complain. So Tumblr's gonna get even more flag yeah. and it just sucks. It's kind of like YouTube's uh, censorship system. It's the same thing. Like it's a robot doing it. No one actually watches videos, and so it, it gets yeah. shit wrong all the time. Um. Anyway, back to the <laughs> anus. Um. No. I'm the important <laughs> things. <laughs> back to this. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so her phone wasn't found with her, but her Tumblr kept being updated. I thought that was creepy. Was it the killer? Who knows? Anyway, there was litigation around this case, obviously. Uh, Lamb's parents filed a wrongful death suit claiming that the hotel failed to, quote-unquote, inspect and seek out hazards in the hotel that presented an unreasonable risk of danger to Lamb and other hotel guests, which... Like, the hotel said, how the fuck could have we known that, like, your kid was going to end up in a fucking tank? And that's fair, oh, okay. and they won. Actually, it didn't win. It was just dismissed. The suit was dismissed. Um, but there was also another, like, suit that was from, like, all the hotel guests that drank the water, and they won that one. Um, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, now, this is interesting. I don't know, like, if... 
I don't know. This is something, but the circumstances of of this girl's death have been compared to plot elements of a horror film called Dark Water. It's from 2005. Um, kind of a flop, but anyway. Um, long story short, in this film, like this, uh, like mom and daughter move into a shitty apartment and the elevator doesn't work and also weird water is coming from like the building's faucets and eventually it leads them to like a water tank oh, on a rooftop where they find a dead girl so there's that <laughs> yeah maybe the murder got inspired if, if it was indeed a killer um and that is all i have any thoughts on like the movie what like how it would be so similar <laughs> oh I you know, just any like thoughts asking on, like... me to like critique the movie i don't know <laughs> be less <No>. <laughs> <laughs> like and why i mean i don't know what do you think it sounds to me like a killer got inspired. um well i mean yeah i think the thing i was gonna say that if this wasn't just an accident and she just had an episode and freaked out and crawled into the tank then yeah i think it's very likely that someone murdered her um maybe i don't know that's that's maybe they watched this movie the night before uh maybe they haven't seen the movie maybe it was just like hey there's a tank <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah, I mean, and there was no like, like you said, there's no blunt force trauma. So then the question becomes, how they kill her, or maybe they drowned her. But I don't know. Yes, I mean, like if she like overdosed and like fainted and fell in there by accident, that explains that. But one, how could she get up high, that high, like up um, to the tank? And two, there was no drugs found in her system. People are like, oh, maybe like the drugs were out because she was decomposing. I'm like, bullshit. I don't believe that. Um. So it wasn't that she fainted from drugs. Maybe she was crazy and she just killed herself. But yeah, I mean, I guess she could have just drowned herself. Like that's literally it. She either drowned herself or like someone, someone like right put well, her there and drowned her, and like there were no fingerprints. I mean, I always turn to Reddit, and my people at Reddit <laughs> have said that it's actually not that high up, and that it would pretty be pretty easy, and that a lot of that's been blown out of proportion. I don't know if that's true or not, but. That's a possibility. The thing was literally two miles high. No, so, what? Okay. <laughs> it's like it's like maybe six feet. Like you could climb. You could give yourself a good climb, a good boost. I guess. I mean, sure. I don't know. Anyway, the last Do thing you, I was gonna, you think it's ghosts? Um, I think that it's something supernatural. Just because, okay. like, again, I mean. Or a killer who was just able to, like, put her in there and close the lid fast and so she drowned. No, actually, no. He would have had to drown her first because otherwise she would just stay alive there for, like, 20 days. Um, and, like, Wait, how did but he... it's full. How did he do that without a ladder? No, was it, it not wasn't. not full of water? No, it wasn't full. Oh. Because otherwise, like, staff would have seen, like, water was, like, pouring out of... Like, no, it wasn't full. It wasn't full. Huh. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, the last thing I was going to mention is that... Um, people like very quickly try to profit off of this and i thought it was kind of horrendous like basically the article that i read has like six different examples of people who are like we they use this in a series or they're gonna make a movie yeah, about exactly. it or they use it for a short story that's why yeah. i don't really i like don't <laughs> so, have a lot of appreciation for that i'm like this girl died and y'all are just y'all are gross like i appreciate fictional murder and stuff because that's fun and it's yeah original or whatever but like come on guys this was 2013 that wasn't that long ago i know i know but there were so many that there was like like a whole section of the article just for that like they better be paying <laughs> um, her family like i don't know i know I, I doubt that especially because like the movies and series that do it like they basically are like the, like there's literally like I, I don't know i'm not gonna read it but like one of the tv shows or one of the movies that was like um the, it was about a girl who was found on a water tank and her name was like oh, lisa on. and it was at the at, at the sequel oh. hotel or something and i'm like oh, oh god. my god <laughs> it's so yeah. cheap and like that way they get out of like having to pay anyone it's so awful. That's I would say that the thoughts. one thing that stumps me and like gives me like a lot of doubt, I would say, about whether or not she did this herself is the fact that she was found naked. Like, if I'm about to kill myself, I want to die with some goddamn dignity. <laughs> dignity. <laughs> no one wants to see that. Like, I feel really yeah. bad for her. I think that maybe I feel like this might have actually been covered up murder, but maybe it was a ghost. Because why would a ghost yeah. undress you? It doesn't. Yeah. I, I honestly or maybe oh oh or maybe it was aliens that would explain the oh, anus oh you're right bro and that oh, oh my god wow I, I don't think they do deaths that gruesome though well maybe Hon they didn't okay, mean honestly, to maybe she was so traumatized by the probing and she just she was like i need to cool <laughs> off maybe. you know 
Honestly. Okay, I'm gonna honestly I'm gonna keep aliens as number two. I'm gonna keep my verdict. I think my theory number one is it was like a person okay. chasing her. It was a killer. But also like the that's, the that's edited elevator, voice. like that's sketchy. That is that is sketchy. Yeah, I mean yeah, but that doesn't rule out that it's a killer. Maybe it's just a killer that also happened to conspire with the hotel. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe it's like American horror story where there's like a killer. I mean, technically it's a ghost killer, but still, like let's say in this case it's a flesh and blood one, like a, a um a killer who like is covered up by the hotel. Yeah. Or like maybe owns the hotel. Right. You know, and he just likes to kill people. We don't know. Yeah. Oh my god, that would explain the other murders too. Anyway. Ugh. Okay. okay. You go. You yes, go. we're we're gonna go. So actually, I chose one that's close to home, Andre. <laughs> uh, a pun. <laughs> it's not really a pun. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm gonna be talking about the toxic lady. Uh, have you heard of this? My mom. No, I'm kidding. Oh my um... God. <laughs> <laughs> not that close to home. <laughs> no, no, I haven't. So this occurred in Riverside, California. So. Oh. The toxic lady, Gloria Ramirez. So on February 19th in 1994, Ramirez was brought into the Riverside General Hospital, hospital ER. So at this point, uh, Gloria was suffering from late stage cervical cancer. This was actually diagnosed a few months before she came into the hospital on this night. So at this, like, okay. that kind of sucks. Like you find out like advanced cervical cancer anyway. And she was only in her 30s. So yeah. So she gets to the wow. ER and her symptoms are that she's extremely confused. She's suffering from tachycardia. Her heart is beating way too fast. She has a breathing condition. Um, it's called Shane Stokes respiration. So it's causing short breaths and apnea. So loss of breath. And yeah, so she's just, she's a whole mess right here. <laughs> so this is mm -hmm. happening and the medical staff is attempting to sedate her. So they inject her with three different things, which I think is interesting. I am not like a medical professional for many reasons, but I don't know if you're supposed to inject them with three different things, but they do. So they inject her with diazepam, mm. midazolam, and lorazepam to try and like calm her down. Yeah, basically. All at the same time? Yeah, all this goes down in like the sum of like less than okay. an hour. Wow. So Gloria does not respond well to these things. Okay. So immediately they attempt defibrillation. So the like the paddles basically. Wait, 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 wait. They were trying to sedate her? Yeah. <laughs> and they were successful, but then she, like, died? Hey, hey. Don't don't skip to the... Don't skip story. <laughs> no, because you, you said you said defibrillators. So. Oh, no, she wasn't... You don't use defibrillators when you're dying. You do it to restart their heart. There's, like, a... Okay, so the Hollywood... Hollywood shows you defibrillators as it was, like, when their heart stops, but she had tachycardia, so it was going really, really fast. And so, like, when they injected her uh -huh. with it, she didn't really respond well to it. Either her heart started being faster, or maybe it was slowed down too much. So in order to reset the correct heartbeat, you would defibrillate. Oh, I did not know that. You're not a medical professional? Please. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> so, they're attempting defibrillation with the paddles. Um, and so at this point, this is when the nurses start to notice some weird things happening. So, one, there is an oily sheen covering her body. Okay. Um, okay, so we got that. Then the next is that they Aliens, can <laughs> Aliens. The next thing is that they can smell um, an, a strange odor coming from her mouth. It's a fruity, garlicky smell, which that's kind of weird. I don't, I don't know what you ate for yeah. that to happen. And so here's when things start to get really weird. So one of the nurses, a registered nurse named Susan Kane, she... She gets a syringe and she draws the blood from her and she immediately notices that the blood smells wrong. Um, it smells like ammonia. <laughs> if you've That's ever so smelled fun. ammonia, it's very pungent. Yeah. It's very strong. Ammonia, it smells like fabuloso. What is that? Fabuloso? The cleaner? The floor cleaner? Oh, I have no idea. I've never cleaned anything in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I smell ammonia. That is not what blood's supposed to smell yeah, like. exactly. <laughs> so she passes to a medical resident who noticed manila particles floating in the blood. Um, her name's Julie Krajinski. And they kind of just agreed, like, this isn't normal. Like, you should not have particles floating in your blood. It should not smell like ammonia. That's just... No. And so Susan mm -hmm. Kane, the one who drew the blood... She faints. <laughs> she like I. She's a registered nurse in the hospital. You're supposed to be able to handle a lot, but she faints. And then Julie Gorgeous. Well, maybe it was the smell. Maybe it wasn't like she was scared. Maybe it was. The oh smell yeah, no, I yeah. 
But yeah, so uh, Julie Corgency, she's the um, medical resident. She also began to feel nauseated and she eventually fainted. Uh, Maureen Welch, a respiratory therapist who was assisting, passed out a couple minutes later. So that's three of the people who are trying to help this woman and they just, they're down. <laughs> they fell down. <laughs> So at this yeah, point, yeah, at this point, all the emergency uh, department patients were evacuated to the parking lot because they weren't sure what's happening. If this was like, like I don't know, like what's happening? What's the toxic that stuff? That's gonna be like so, she's gonna die anyway. So just uh, yeah. yeah, spoiler alert, she does. <laughs> So, a crew actually stayed behind to try and stabilize Ramirez, but after 45 minutes of CPR and defibrillation, she was pronounced dead. Wow, and... that's so generous. 45 minutes, wow. Right. <laughs> so, the cause of death was decided to be kidney failure with complications from her cancer. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's one cause, maybe. <laughs> right. Like, we don't... But, like, what caused it, I guess? Because they still don't really know. So, overall, 23 people in the hospital became ill, and five were actually hospitalized after this event. And, yeah. So, like, that's all pretty weird. <laughs> that's... Yeah. That's all pretty weird. So, the Department of Health and Human Services interviewed the 34 hospital staff who had been working, and... They, like, did a questionnaire or whatever, you know, they had everyone fill it out, and they, like, talked to them individually, and here's what they decided on, and this is where I get kind of annoyed. <laughs> they decided that this entire event, at least not in terms of Gloria herself, like, they still don't know how she died or why she died, really, but in terms of, like, the three nurses mm -hmm. or doctors, they decided that was mass hysteria, <laughs> and that they weren't actually oh sick at all, and that it was probably a reaction to smelling the ammonia. They just thought, oh, it's not supposed to happen. So they all freaked out and passed out. However, I do doubt that. Yeah, I doubt it too. Um, they also tried to say like, oh, they had normal blood tests, you know, after we tested them and it was only women. Why weren't the men affected? So they were like, oh, hysteria. However, these women were not happy about this at all because that it's like calling your <laughs> sanity into question, you know? So, Gorchitsky, yeah. she was really mad. She said that she spent two weeks in the intensive care unit. She didn't just say it, like, that happened. And she had breathing problems. She developed hepatitis. Um, she developed necrosis in her knees. <laughs> yeah, what and then the another uh, hospital staff member, Susan Baldera, she spent ten days hospitalized after this event. And so, yeah, I'm not buying this mass hysteria thing, I think. <laughs> yeah. I also remember, remember when I said when we were talking about the dancing plague of fifteen whatever that I think mass hysteria is just a cop out for unexplainable uh -huh. things that happen to more than one person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> same. So the Riverside Coroner's Office asked um, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory to investigate because uh, they had no clue at this point what had caused Gloria to die. So they posited that Ramirez had been using something called mm -hmm. dimethyl sulfoxide. It's a powerful degreaser. It comes in like a little tube. It's like a cream. And they as and she was using it as like a, re a remedy for pain. So that's what they thought was happening. And here's why. Also, bear in mind that just because that this, this explanation sounds pretty good, even I'm kind of skeptical about it. So that tells you something. <laughs> no matter what you're about to say, like, it has to be really, really okay. fucking good for me to stop thinking about the particulates in her blood. Because even even when people like eat or put on themselves or drink weird, crazy fucking shit, it usually doesn't show up in like physical form in their blood on with with the plain eye looking at it. So go ahead. Methyl sulfoxide it has a garlicky taste, so that would explain the garlic smell that was emanating from her mouth. So that's you know obviously that mm -hmm. makes sense, and then. It also could have caused the kidney failure by uh, creating a blockage in her urinary tract. Um, it is sold in gel form, which would explain like why there's an oily sheen on her body. Maybe she was rubbing it on her skin. Um, and then, so here's the sciencey explanation for this, which is what the Livermore lab put out. So the oxygen mass that was applied to Ramirez would create dimethyl sulfane when it mixed with the dimethyl sulfoxide, which would then crystallize at room temperature, resulting in particles in the blood. So, yes, that's possible. However, 
<laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I said however. This is not a good segue. <laughs> but the, the defibrillators with the electric shock hitting her body would create dimethyl sulfate. This, like, there's so many chemicals happening here, <laughs> which is highly toxic, which would affect the staff. So that makes a lot of sense. Like, it's all sciencey, it's all beautiful, whatever. Like, I was pretty eager to be like, oh, like, that explains it. It's not that big of a mystery. Give me that twist, Shannon. Give me that twist. <laughs> Fuck science. Fuck science. So, for one, Ramirez's family said that Gloria never used that type of cream or oil. They denied it. They said, no, like, this isn't. No, like she didn't do that. And mm-hmm. other scientists over the years have seen this and been like, that's impossible. Like everything you're explaining is impossible. And the Livermore lab didn't actually run any tests or simulations to prove that this is in fact possible. And when questioned about it, the like head of the Livermore lab kind of retracted and said, it's just a theory. So, <laughs> the fuck? yeah. Um, that's kind of weird. Also, things get super complicated when you think about the fact that the syringe that Susan Kane drew the blood with was never found again. It was apparently accidentally thrown away. So... <laughs> I do not believe yeah, that for like, a second. Yeah, I don't know about that. And the last theory is by Gloria Ramirez's family. They thought that the Riverside Hospital had... Um, Basically, they had poor conditions, and it's actually proven over the years before Gloria Ramirez was brought in that they've had sewage, sewage gas leaks and random stuff happening that shouldn't have been happening in their hospital. What? A hospital in Riverside has problems? <laughs> oh my, oh my god. god. Yeah, so those are like the, the cut and dry theories. I, I don't know. I have a lot of trouble buying that whole science-y thing because... I don't know. I guess it's just too simple and they didn't actually test it. So how do we know that it's true? You know? So Mm -hmm. the other theory is obviously aliens. And yeah, I mean, when I heard Oily Sheen, (laughs) didn't I say aliens? (laughs) Yeah. um, So I think that, and this is like totally not, I can't find any research to prove any of these things, but let's say for instance, that aliens were doing tests on this woman So one of the things that aliens are obsessed with are our reproductive organs. Am I right? Am I right? Gloria had cervical cancer in the late stages that wasn't diagnosed until three months before her death. Maybe the aliens, when they abducted her, like, did something stupid and, like, advanced her cancer by, like, 300 times, like, super fast or something. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they they messed her up. I don't know. And And then maybe she just, like at the hospital they like triggered something that wasn't supposed to be triggered like an alien sack of something i don't know i'm just saying mm-hmm. it's possible <laughs> have, yeah of course that is possible you know who you're talking <laughs> to <laughs> so that's a theory it, and it might be proof of alien abduction if there is if, if if basically like we never solve what made this woman so toxic to other people if it's not something of this earth then maybe it is something from somewhere else Dude, like, the fucking nurse got necrosis yeah. on her knees. Like, what the That's fuck? so crazy. That's so random. And that's so, like, fast. Like, she got necrosis in some time in the only two yeah. weeks that she was there. That's such a fast advancement right. of the necrosis. It's just, like, again, like, such a fast... Ad- unless this woman, like, really didn't give a shit about her health and just never went to checkups or anything. Such, like, a... Just, like late stage cervical cancer and she didn't detect it like yeah it's damn. wild i don't know um that that sounds to me like yeah that sounds to me yeah weird alien shit also i mean i i i'm gonna take what those uh investigators said about like the mass hysteria thing of like it only affecting women and say well maybe that's because the aliens were only experimenting on women with this specific toxin or something Ooh. and so it only affects women hello what up <laughs> honestly that's good shit <laughs> anyway yeah so also for anyone who doesn't know i actually went to uc riverside so yeah uh-huh. <laughs> this is this is so an interesting one woman, for me actually i might actually be a toxic woman <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and this was in the 90s it actually inspired an episode of the x-files which i think is interesting um uh-huh. yeah any thoughts what do you think 
Um, I think that for a second, when you started telling me your case, I thought you were going to talk about the I Am God creepypasta, which is amazing. <laughs> Have you ever heard of this? Oh my god. Uh, like, yes, I yeah. actually, I read that when I was looking for something. Super duper duper TLDR for the listeners. Like, it's basically a creepypasta about this woman who goes to the hospital and she's sick and, like, they try to treat her. I also don't even remember exactly how it goes, but basically, like, oh, before they can treat her, she, like, kills everyone in the hospital, like, bites her heads off or something. And then, like, one of the staff members is like who are you and she's like i am god and then she kills them <laughs> and i just thought that was like the pinnacle of like an edgy 13 year old writing creepy pasta <laughs> like really that's the best you could come up with for an ending um oh man yeah yeah no <laughs> i actually um, did dabble in writing bad horror when i was like nine years old though it was, it was pretty intense i had this monster that grew long fingernails and killed people with them i mean but you were also nine so kudos did you love but, it um, <laughs> <laughs> i this case is fucking crazy i had never heard of this i am shook um it's some good shit i don't know i don't i mean listen my family doesn't know that i take fish oil because i mean it's literally like right there in my bathroom but i don't think they've ever even noticed so it's possible that the family of this person didn't know that she put like weird greasy but it oil smells shit on her so body. bad but like you would know <laughs> i know i know i feel like they would have noticed it's different like if it smells that scrum they would have noticed it would have been like girl why you smell like fabuloso look it up shannon um that just sounds like so, a compliment yeah. to me like uh, fabuloso sounds great <laughs> <laughs> um so i'm th- i'm leaning aliens like and, and it's not all aliens like people okay like like i said elisha lamb i'm leaning toward it was just a killer but this I'm leaning toward aliens more than I'm leaning towards like she was just a crazy fucking person who tested with weird shit like alternative medicine. I don't think that. I think that something weird fucking happened here. Yeah, um, I don't know. I just I feel like I have to side like, with the family when they say no. You know that didn't happen. Also, they were yeah. pretty convinced that Riverside Hospital sucked, and honestly, you know they're probably right. But <laughs> yeah, but like in the end, that's kind of inconsequential because even if it was the best hospital in the world, like the staff would have still gotten infected with right. whatever it is this was. And that's the other thing. Um, I believe the nurses when they say like, no, like I have real physical symptoms. This isn't hysteria. Like, yeah, because they're nurses. Like they lo- see all kinds of shit. Are well, also me? that could just be because like, I'm a fucking doubt- feminist and I'm like, don't you dare call my women hysterical. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, even if you weren't like, Again, look at where these people work and what they do for a living. Like, you'd think they'd be able to handle that. Like, maybe the smell was so strong. Like, that doesn't have to be supernatural. Maybe it was just the smell. But that doesn't explain the necrosis. Mm-hmm. That doesn't explain no. the physical pain. Um, that's just so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it only affects It's women. wild, honestly. Like, I, I would love to hear, like, if the Livermore Lab ever does try and simulate that. But it's not like they have stock in it. Like, they don't need to do anything. They were asked by the Riverside County yeah. to, you know, look into it, you know, so it's not their responsibility. Maybe they still want to pay money for the experiments. I don't know. That's some crazy shit, dude. I mean, the last thing I can think of is maybe like hospital cover up. I don't know exactly how that would fit into this case, this puzzle, but just like the fact that the needle like was trashed. Sure. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, actually that is a theory I didn't get into because I was so excited about <laughs> aliens, but <laughs> there is a theory that I ran across in my research that said that the Riverside hospitals employees were in the meth trade. And, uh, what you would do is that you would fill some of the bags, I guess, IV bags with ammonia or something. Mm-hmm. And then I guess meth or something. I don't know. I didn't really look into it that deeply, but basically they're saying that that would be responsible for the ammonia smell and they would have accidentally given her one of the bags that was filled with drugs and caused her Oh death. my god! Can you imagine that? Right, like that's just a theory, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the oily sheen was just that her body was so intoxicated by the shit they gave her accidentally that it started producing like sweat, like ammonia smelling sweat. <laughs> that's yeah. So, because they're putting it like directly into your bloodstream. That's fucking crazy. I know. Like, can you even imagine? <laughs> yeah, that would kill you so fast. And of course it would give you tachycardia. And also it would explain the blood particulates. Oh my god. So yeah, maybe wow. it's a cover-up. I don't know. Don't come for us, please. Shit. Yeah. And and like then like the, the, the one sample of blood that was drawn like gets lost. Obviously it does, so like they don't find out that they accidentally like ammonia her ass. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> that does not explain though, like the the fact that she like detector her cervical cancer so late again it could just be that she's someone who like got unlucky yeah. but i feel like people who get regular checkups and they're regular people who go to the hospital on a regular basis they wouldn't let that happen to themselves like that's crazy uh, or they would have been symptoms i don't place. have health I mean, insurance i never go to the doctor 
Health care in uh, America is expensive, fair. Andre. <laughs> yes, it is. I've heard. Um, I. <laughs> oh man, that was good. That was creepy. It scared me. I was actually looking like behind my back. Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! Why the oily sheen? You're okay. First of all, what's um, with, what's with the fish, fish oil? oil? What does that do for you? Is linked to lower rates of Alzheimer's in later age. Also, it helps with um, okay. it helps prevent. Well, it's linked to the prevention of heart disease by these studies. But like, no medical study ever dares to like make any kind of like concise conclusion on anything because like scientists don't want to be wrong and then have to retract what they say, which is fair. But like, the evidence to me is like so like telling that I'm like also like any like dangers of taking fish oil are so like minimal and like sub marginal that i'm like honestly i'll do it should you be worried about alzheimer's at your age um shouldn't you shannon well yeah <laughs> but listen girl i work at a senior center yes i'm worried about alzheimer's at my age prevention is key i'm 21 and i'm taking fucking fish oil as my brain stays whole at age is it age. bad that i forgot how old you are like i was like see 19 <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I'm about to turn 22, Shannon. We have to do something for my birthday. If I have to like travel to you, I'll think about it. You should. Um, I miss you. I do. No, oh, I miss you too. Um, oh, Every talk, and we're like, mm, we miss each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, we gotta stay on brand, Shannon. Make it creepy. Um, I wear your skin. Honestly, <laughs> perfect. Uh, no, that is that's a crazy case. That is um. That's pretty creepy. Like I said, I was looking behind my back. Like, it doesn't matter if I, like, <laughs> it's not like the toxic woman could, like, come for me. But still, do you ever get that just, like, weird feeling when you're talking about something creepy and you want to, like, Ugh, uh, I don't know. Like, make sure. Not that much scares me, so, no. Everything know, scares me. so great. <laughs> um, oh you know, God. I am the type of person okay. who, if I see a guy walking towards me on the sidewalk, I'll cross the street. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I do too. So see, something yeah. does scare you. Um, okay, well, guys, if you have any suggestions for next episode's topic, um, I mean, honestly, we're probably going to like, Shannon and I are going to pick it like right after we end this. So honestly, <laughs> don't even bother. But if you do, do bother. <laughs> um, tell us on uh, Twitter. Uh, leave us a comment, I guess. Leave us a tweet, technically. Tweet at us. I don't know. Do your thing. Um, at Talk Scary, you can also find our podcast on um, TuneIn. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play. We're not on... We, we're on oh. iHeartRadio now, actually. I submitted a podcast. So you can find us on iHeartRadio, if that's your thing, at um, Scary Talk Podcast. Um, other than that, Shannon, anything else? Um... Um, 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 I normally say, like, oh, don't do this or that. I guess don't rub things on your body if you don't know what they are, like, just as a rule. <laughs> yeah, um, start taking fish oil. Don't eat any large meals before bed or you will have nightmares. And, uh... Don't use your cue on Tumblr because people think that... Yeah, that it was the... someone else. <laughs> also, <laughs> like, um, don't do drugs... Uh, because if you do any kind of recreational drug and you ever die, like people will try to like cup out with that. It's like, oh, it was the ecstasy or whatever. So, Such an interesting reason not to do drugs. Yeah, don't give them <laughs> feel. Honestly, like if you are the kind of weird person that like your family, like you're doing drugs, like you just love doing them and your family has been like, yo, stop. And nothing convinces you. Maybe there's a weird, peculiar, specific, weird fucking reason will convince you. If you ever die, someone ever kills you and you do drugs and they found anything in your system and that's not why you died they will go with that before they go with murder so especially if there's no trauma on your body so don't do drugs if nothing else will convince you maybe that will uh i also want to say though after they murder you they can just inject you with drugs anyway i guess i, I don't know how common of a method that is though i don't know it's like <laughs> let's make it look like an overdose <laughs> all right brad um, <laughs> do you want to get dinner after this <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah don't let the bed box bite i don't know until next time my creepies uh shannon i'll talk to you soon everyone uh, good night good night <laughs>